Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here with a board game vlog, and I just came off of an incredible experience. I went to a 24-hour game marathon at a game store here in Seattle. Um, I ended up changing around my schedule at work, and then someone told me that if I hurried, I could get in a spot at this game marathon. And it ended up being 24 hours of rather heavy games. It was really, really fun. So I kind of packed up my dream bag. I put Florenza and DR Congo and Green Incorporated. There were Splatters, it was Nornberg, everything in this bag. And I went to Blue Highway Games, which is a cool game store out here in Seattle. And um, yeah, so for 24 hours, I played games. <laughs> uh, the day started out with Florenza. We played Shipyard, I played Container, I played Green Incorporated, I played uh, Core Worlds, I played a lot of code names in between other games, uh, we played a little bit of Pictomania as a goofy thing, um, just all the things under the sun, I gotta go through all my pictures, um, but it's an incredible experience that I've had here, and I... I really wish there was a good way of doing that on a regular basis, but, you know, it's a little on the extreme side to spend 24 hours doing something like that, but certainly 12 hours doesn't seem that bad. By 12 hours, I've played like three or four games, and I'm pretty plucky still. Um, this morning, we were all a little on the ragged side. Uh, the, the game of Container in particular was a little tense with people fighting, and I, I don't think I'm going to like Container as well, so that did not help. I've not played it before. Um, so I'm home now, and I'm vlogging and doing some other kind of cleanup work from other stuff because I can't go to sleep yet. I've got some work to do later this afternoon, so I'm going to do vlog, and I'm going to play a new Star Wars game on my iPad, um, but I figured I'd come back and talk a little bit about uh, Greed especially because that was one that I'd only played once. Greed Incorporated is a splatter game. Um, it is a game where you build up companies, you take over as CEO, CFO, COO, um, you sell assets to other people so they put you into their company, and as your company gains wealth, you kind of stash it away, and then if ever, one year over the next, a company does poor, poorly, they, they will kick out somebody on their board so they can kick out the CEO or the CFO or whatever. So maybe you're in the company and you get kicked out. Well, they give you a golden parachute or a severance package, and that becomes your personal money to buy the victory points in the game, which are very, very, very rare. So in the game that we played, um, over the course of the game, one gentleman had four companies at one time, so these giant things that you're bidding and doing all this stuff with, and I had up to two at a time, but I probably went through five or six different companies and tanked them and sold them off and gave them to other people. Um, what's neat about this one is so you're, you're as a company bidding on assets, and you take the assets and they produce goods, they change goods into other goods. Um, every asset you buy changes the market price on a good and then after you're done producing your goods, you have this whole trading stock section. So you can promise, uh, you can trade goods between each other, you can trade money, you can trade money for them to turn one of your goods into a produced good, you can promise future things. Um, if you own multiple companies, they can trade with and each other any way they like. There's like a minimum of a million dollars in the game, which is one dollar in the game. And all they have to do is make sure that both sides get a physical something. And you can do all these broken cool things. And then once that round is done, you measure how much money you made in that round compared to the round before that. If that number is lower, then somebody's getting kicked off the board and you get to, everyone that's on the board gets to nominate themselves or someone else. Everyone that gets nominated gets fired and gets a percentage, and everyone that's left in the company kind of moves up. So if you become the new CEO, you're going to take over the company and then use it to buy assets and use that company in the game. So this is a three-hour game, and uh, there's a set number of rounds because there's only so many cards in the game and you play until all the cards are played. But it's a very cool, weird, interesting game. Um, the downside to it is that um, if you're not careful, if you lose your companies, all of your companies, and you're not the only one that isn't full on companies, uh, there's a bidding round to buy 
new companies and if you lose that bid only one new company gets started each round and you can kind of be taken out of the game for a few rounds and you can come back later um, so it's this awkward semi-player elimination type thing and I don't know like it is built into the game you can sort of try and avoid it but I mean you make a mistake in a game like that and you feel it pretty hard um, so that happened to two players in our five player game it was still really fun though. Um, I feel bad about that. Um, in Shipyard, it was the first, uh, the like fourth or fifth time I played it. It was the first time I played it with someone who knew it really well and someone who didn't know it at all. It was like a really weird mix. Um, I built I built the coolest engine though. So the the deal with Shipyard is it's a Rondell game and um, you get these objective cards and during the game you're going to be eliminating objective cards until you're down to one of each one at the end of the game and so at the beginning of the game you can kind of work toward any of them and then you kind of ditch one and you ditch another one and that'll give you what you're actually working on for the end of the game um, this is the first time I got the one I got and I got the one that you have to get through as many canal tiles as possible so I started building these cool little loops and moving these really tiny ships as far and as fast as they could go um, it was a hell of a lot of fun and I won by a pretty good margin on that one but it was just it was the coolest engine and I felt a little bit bad because I that one was not a close game where most of the games of the day and night were very very close that one was not and it it showed it showed in the morale of the people. Um, for Florenza, it was the first game of the entire day. Uh, we taught two new people and we retaught ourselves because it's, uh, it's a little hard to get going on that game once you haven't played it in a while. Um, that one's a very interesting one. Uh, you use other people's uh, spaces that they're building up and you're looking for things and you're giving people points and you're trying to claim things first and there's lots of rivalrous nature but it's such a big sprawling beautiful game um, it was it was a pretty neat one that was my also one I won all the ones at the beginning of the day but toward the middle of the night I started getting crushed at stuff but I think we switched from games that I typically am good at to games I'm not so good at so that's what happens um, Container was one that I think I needed it explained in a different way than it was. And that's not a fault to my friend Ross who taught it. It was where is the points and where is the money and how does it get there? And um, in that game it's not entirely apparent. Um, I also think that the game itself doesn't self-correct. A lot of games that are designed these days have been developed to self-correct so players can't have these very unfun versions of a very fun game. So container, um, when you bring your goods, like you're, you're building and doing all kinds of stuff, but one thing is that when you get containers on your ships and you're shipping them to your island or whatever, um, people can pay you to take those containers from you and then the bank doubles their cash and it brings more cash into the total pool of money in the game um, in our game all players were selling to themselves a lot so the bank doesn't overpay and so the amount of money in the game was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and the amount of incentive for other people to produce goods they didn't themselves need became smaller and smaller and smaller and it became this weird game of attrition and it got very tense for 4 or 5 a.m. whenever it was um, but there was nothing in the game that would further it along if the players decided not to do it themselves. I ended up taking a role in the game of buying things I didn't need just to keep the game moving and I don't like that. I don't like that I had to do that otherwise we were just going to be in this very miserable game. And the two players at the table who had had a fabulous time with this game before were like, no, 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 no. This game can be very fun. Listen to all these things. And I was like, well, yes, it can be very fun, but it can also be this. <laughs> so. I, I wish there was a mechanic within the game that would help it stay fun. That's not to say it's a bad game, it has some cool things in it. Um, the resin ships that I think it's pretty famous for at this point are funky and they break easily. They're I, th This is a game that if it wasn't caught up in like IP and all kinds of things, unfortunately the designer died a while back. Um, so I think that would have been 
an easy one to get picked to to get reprinted by Fantasy Flight or something. And um, it's so funky, and the game is not so approachable that it'll ever get reprinted. So I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. I I'll probably try it again. Uh, someone here local it has it, so um, I'll play it again. <laughs> you never know. Um, see, and then I finally got Core Worlds back to the table, which is one of my favorite deck builders I've ever played, but one of the longest deck builders I've ever played. Uh, so Core Worlds is a deck builder in a sense where you're, you start with a small deck and you draft cards into make it a bigger deck. However, this one is one of the more strategic of everything, so instead of buying cards from market like normal, the cards come out in a sequence. So you go from round one to round ten. Every two rounds the card decks change that you're going to be buying from and the cards ramp up over time. You draft the cards open face so you have everything available on that round. You have kind of a balance between planets to conquer and allies to hire or whatever you want to call them. Soldiers and infantry and that kind of stuff. Um, the actual gameplay, you play cards out into your board, or you buy cards, and both of those take actions and energy. But the cards you play on your board don't have to immediately attack. They don't all have to attack. You can attack with them. You can attack with some of them, or keep some of them out. You can build up an army. You can build a small, quick army. And everyone is going to be going for the same core worlds at the end of the game, and core worlds are bonus points based on how you built your deck. So you need the core world that gives you points for infantry so you build your deck to be able to conquer that world at the end because you're guaranteed to see each core world but they're rivalrous. So you know that if your opponent also has a bunch of infantry you'll need to make that your planet as well. Um, really interesting stuff. I, I got pretty well crushed on that game but I just so out of practice and I felt like I got hate drafted and I didn't respond to it quick enough and well, it, interesting still and really a quite good game but I don't know where it belongs because when you're talking two and a half hours of deck building that's a hard sell for a lot of people that enjoy deck building a lot. Legendary is about as long as I think you can get away with without people you know shying away but Core Worlds did have an expansion that I feel is almost necessary to the gameplay and had a second expansion which I never played. Um, it just I don't play expansions that often, but the the first expansion to Core Worlds feels like what the base game was originally before they separated out a base game so that they could sell it a little more accessible because it takes out the kind of factions and tokens and stored actions and punishing events and these types of things that just don't aren't aren't family friendly. Um, yeah, so. The marathon was an amazing experience, and I feel like they do that for the community. Really, uh, they don't make money on it. There's no way they didn't lose money on it. Um, so I will definitely be back when the store is open to buy a couple games because they did so much for us. Uh, they provide snacks and entertainment, and they got to play some games with us, and they connect with their community, and it's just a really cool thing for a store to do. Um, more community events like that are why board games are amazing. Um, I think I'm going to go do some cleaning now. My house is a pretty well wrecked place and I'm going to try and do my blender video. But um, it was nice to see you all and I will see you next time. Bye!